Hello, Swivelheads. It's Greg Allison with Swivelhead News coming to you late live here in the wee hours of Wednesday morning. Woden, nice day morning, my friends. Uh, the situation on the war fronts is getting testy. The escalations are going up even more. Everybody's waiting on bated breath to see what Iran is going to do. The uh, EAMs are going off the charts. There's talks that, uh, oh, there was a simulation done uh, which indicated uh, actually, it was the, the bulletin of the atomic clock scientists did a simulation, which, and I'll show all this stuff in a minute, They their simulation said that if Iran and Israel got into war, it would go nuclear real fast. Holy smoke, guys. I'm going to bring up the chat room here, and then we're going to straight into the news and see what's cooking here. So um, that's the last thing we need, but it may be what comes. It may be what's to happen. So uh, let's uh, do the share screens here and get into this real fast. Yeah, this is from the Bolton of the Atomic Scientist. War games simulated a conflict between Israel and Iran. It quickly went nuclear. And, uh, you know, it may just be because everything in Iran is so deeply buried. They both probably have nuclear weapons. So there is concerns there as to what might play out, how it might go down. Uh, <clears throat> this Now, this simulation was done uh, back in February, the end of February. So it's over a month old now. But as the tensions are ratcheting up between the two, this was before Israel struck the, struck the consulate with Iran. This was done before Iran was making the threats to retaliate. Now we may be on the verge of, this may be why right now the EAMs the, uh, are going off the charts. So uh, those are the emergency action messages, which are alerts to our nuclear forces. Now, are, are we looking to get drug into this? It's quite possible because Iran has also talked about hitting us quickly. Yeah, this is scary. This could affect everybody worldwide. You know, a nuclear war anywhere is going to spread radiation and it may cause a nuclear winter, which means, you know, you better have your seeds, just have extra seeds ready and maybe some long-term food storage. A nuclear winter may make it really tough for a year or two or three, depending on how big it is. A big enough one could make things really messed up for, you know, longer than three years, maybe even seven years or more for really bad cold weather. So forget global warming. This might be their ultimate geoengineering to keep things cool. I don't know, guys. A little heat up front, cold on the end. Uh, I'm being facetious, but uh, this is not a pretty situation um, by any any measure at all. Said the game consisted of three moves after receiving a war brief and instructions from Israeli Prime Minister teams representing Israeli Minister of Defense and Minister of Foreign Affairs and the intelligence community formulated and per their preferred options for launching nuclear strikes against Iran. The Prime Minister selected one. Move two begins after Israeli military carries out a strike. And move two, the teams were reconstituted to represent Israel, friendly Arab nations, which are probably a lot less than there were previously, given all the tensions with Gaza and the United States and European allies. Controlled play, I see, a controlled play, Iran, Russia, and China were involved in this. And so each team responded diplomatically and militarily to Israel's initial nuclear strike against Iran. The game's third and final mood was a hot wash where participants discussed their insights. So, uh, you know, here we're talking about something in 2027, being theoretical. Is it going to wait to 2027? Uh, so this this will would be very ugly because, you know, it wouldn't take but a couple of nukes to take out Iran. Oh, excuse me. Israel, Hoffa, if they take you out Hoffa and Tel Aviv, Israel is over, guys. So uh, Israel's got quite a bit of missile defense, uh, but Iran has got not so much missile defense, but they've got everything deep in bunkers. Uh, they both have lots of missiles, and probably by now Iran is nuclear. All right, guys, all these things considered, you might want to think about things. If you go to uh, Prep with Greg, You'll find this is a deal that's on that site now, Grid Doctor 300 Solar System. And this thing is for sale for $477. It comes with a 100-watt solar panel. Now, just to give you guys a comparison, I'm going to stop the share in just a second. I want to go back and show you some stats on this thing real quick. Yeah. 
I bought this Jackery uh, 290 plus. Where did I put it? Right, yeah, right here. I paid almost $600 for this thing back last summer because I thought I had to have something run my CPAP. This thing don't really even run my CPAP. And this is a stinking lithium ion battery. I don't like it for that. Uh, I like over discharge, just running my CPAP on it one night. Uh, and that 100 watt solar panel I got from Harbor Freight. The only thing I charge with is my cell phones. I can't even charge my laptop with it. So that combination together was like a seven over seven hundred dollars, and you get all that together, and, and this is a lot cheaper. This thing is a piece of junk. The solar array and the controller panel. The controller panel was almost worthless. It comes with the Harbor Freight junk, and I've done some videos talking about that. So I'm really surprised to find this deal here like this. This is I don't know if you guys can afford it, but if you maybe you can afford it, if you need to run a CPAP machine. And the grid's down. Uh, this might be for you if uh, you've got a, other electrical needs, run laptops and other stuff. It might be for us. Go back to screen share real quick. I uh, just want to share this with you guys. And again, and we've also got a special on one week supply of food for forty nine dollars for a whole week. Wow, that's that's one of these buckets. That's a pretty good deal. With uh, so if you go to prep, you might go to prep with Greg to get this deal. And again, this is uh they got it knocked down fifty dollars off this thing, and that's cheap. That's cheaper than what the actual site. And if you go to look up Grid Doctor, where the, the actual manufacturer of this, they've got the higher price here. You can't get it that cheap even here from the manufacturer. But what's cool is you can come in and actually see the specs for what this thing is capable of, which isn't really spelled out that well on uh, Prep with Greg Doctor. Uh, Com, unfortunately. So, but you come in here and find that this thing you can stack it. Uh, it's got the LiPo 4 batteries, which is the lith which is the good architecture for batteries. It's not a lithium ion. It's that lithium, uh, what do you call it, phosphate, L lithium iron phosphate is what that is. And it's a lot more stable. This thing has got, uh, it's got far better safety. It's got uh, rechargeable lights. It's, uh, it's good for uh, quite a few things here. But it's got the 300-watt inverter, 100-watt solar panel comes with it, power cables, adapters, the wire splitters. And you can run a CPAP machine with it. Uh, this, you can run, it, it goes through a lot of stuff you can run with it here somewhere. And this, uh, I saw it earlier. I'm scrolling here too fa fast, maybe. But this has got a lot of applications. Yeah, it says you can run a box fan for five hours, a CPAP machine for up to eight hours. And mine crapped out uh, about five hours into it. It's got a, uh, hey, Rodney Middleton. Salute to you. Hey, every, every penny counts. That helps. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's got a, uh, you can run a camera on it, 20 discharges, a laptop, six uh, charges, 60 watt bulb for five hours, mini refrigerator uh, for up to four hours, like you put in maybe a van, smartphone up to 20 charges, a tablet, uh, TV, four hours, uh, 42 inch LED. That's a pretty decent TV. <clears throat> wi Fi router. Yeah. This is a, it's got two AC outlet ports like the one I got. It's got similar ports, power ports to what I, the one I, that, that stupid Jackery uh, 290 Plus is what I got. You can't even actually get the Jackery 290 Plus now. I got it from Walmart. It's, it's bigger than one you get from, uh, that's bigger than one you get at Harbor Freight. So the one at Harbor Freight can, it's got to be kind of worthless. <laughs> Let's go back to the news here. <clears throat> Many of you guys have heard of the Samsung option. <clears throat> you got to understand what. General Mashi at uh, Diane, or have you said, said about the, the, the Samson auction? Should Israel decide to launch on everybody? Said, Israel must be like a mad dog, too dangerous to bother. I consider it uh, all hopeless at that point. We shall have to try to prevent things from coming to that, if at all possible. Armed forces, however, are not uh, the 13th strongest in the world, but rather uh, the second or third. We have the capacity to take the world down with us. The world. And see, they weren't even talking about, uh, look here. They, they said, uh, we bring down the pillars of the world, attack Moscow and European capitals, for instance, the holy places of Islam. Uh, they were talking about taking out everything. That's what the Samson option originally meant. Now, there's some people, you know, kind of throwing shade on it, says, oh, it's unlikely that we would target Europe. Let's hope so. <clears throat> Let's hope so. This is what's got a lot of people alarmed about the idea of a Samson, Samson option when Israel talks that. It, it, it scares a lot of people. Anyway, let's hope it don't go to that because Iran's Revolutionary Guard has escalated the threat. U.S. is on high alert. This is, you know, it continues to be recent news. Um, and 
we, we know the background. We know about the bombing of the embassy. We know about these threats. So there's no point in going through all that and uh, that kind of detail. Uh, Iran's planning to strike Israel back. You know, and here's this option. This is just talking about a few things they could do. And, of course, they're talking about attacking maybe the uh, Israeli consulates abroad, maybe not hitting Iran directly. But there's a lot of sources that say that uh, Iran almost has to, in some fashion, hit at Israel. So there's different. A lot of different opinions out there, a lot of different pundits making a lot of different claims as to what's going to happen, how this would go down. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. But Iran has warned Israel that uh, the coming days will be hard. Well, now we've just come out of Ramadan. We've just come out of Ramadan. This is why the alerts are going off. This is why a lot of people are expecting volleys to start flying. I don't know, guys. If it does, this could get ugly in a hurry. Let's hope and pray it does not. Nazarala, you know, he's the uh, head of, uh, of Hezbollah. He says, Israel, U.S., no Iranian response to the Damascus strike is coming. And this was updated. Uh, it was published and updated both yesterday. That uh, Well, now as the day before yesterday announced this, we are in the 10th already. You know, uh, Ramadan went through the night. So this could happen any time. His Hezbollah Secretary General, uh, Hassan Nazarala, he restate, reiterated, excuse me, the threats of Iran would respond to the alleged Israeli airstrike uh, that targeted uh, the Iranian consul in Damascus, saying the Americans and Israelis recognize that the Iranian response to attack on the Iranian consul is coming. As you know, Israel, um, excuse me, Iran blamed the United States for this. They actually blame the United States. So what's going to come, guys? How is this going to play out? I don't know. Uh, there's just a lot of hype about this. Some people are saying, uh, suggesting, well, maybe Israel, Iran really don't want a full-blown war with Israel, Israel just yet. So maybe they would, you know, strike at some uh, unoccupied military base in Israel and, and, and make their claim, see, we told you so. Uh, to which they still expect Israel would respond. I mean, Israel, I mean we're kind of in a feud situation. It's not a pretty situation at all any way you, 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 any way you slice it, guys. This is ugly. And it's, it, it's just going to escalate if we're not careful. If something doesn't throw water on this, we're in deep kimchi. That's just a flat way of saying something else deep. Kimchi, some people hate kimchi. I actually love kimchi. It's really good. Anyway, um, <clears throat> now here's something else that's come up. An Islamic Jihad spokesman admitted that they had taken over all the Gaza hospitals. You know, it was uh, the intel from Israel, the IDF, that prompted them to hit them. And, of course, it was hitting the, these uh, human shield hospitals that evoked the world's anger against Israel more than anything. So, you know, we see they can see they were set up to attack that way. And uh, the world response, it was, all res it was all set up to turn the world, especially the Islamic world, and the so-called friendly is uh, Islamic nations cited in the atomic scientists for the atomic bulletin report uh, against uh, Israel and much of the world, even the Western world. So we've seen that happening. Uh, Iran smuggling weapons to the West Bank to stoke unrest in Israel. So there's more stuff going on. This is some of the stuff that, uh, uh, that, that was going in. This is Iranian officials talking this stuff. So, uh, we're getting in a testy situation. Why Iran fears, fears a war with America or Israel? Now, this is a kind of a counterpoint. Saying Iran fears a war with Israel or America, but this is based on Iran having internal problems because the population in Iran is uh, really and truly anti-Ayatollah regime. They want to get rid of it because they have been suffering mightily even worse under the hands of the uh, the mullahs than they did under the Shah of Iran. You know, the uh, Shah was very, very ruthless in Iran, and it, that's what turned a lot of Iranians against America uh, because we actually deposed, our CIA had run an operation that deposed the elected president, democratically elected president of Iran because he favored Russia. Now, we've paid heavily ever since for that. Uh, this whole mullah regime took over for that reason. Uh, the Iranians were a very uh, Western-oriented culture for an Islamic nation prior to that, and the population would really much like to be that way today. So there's a lot of fear 
uh, among the mullahs that uh, their power base is shaky. As a matter of fact, they used a huge grant from China to stay in power, something like $8 billion. And of course, President Taterhead has been sending a lot of money over there too, seemingly. So uh, I don't know who's propping up the regime more, us or, or, or Xi Jinping, unfortunately. So uh, just talking about the, uh, the capabilities here. Should Iran be afraid of Israel's long-range missiles attacks? And, you know, we know that the Israelis do have a, quite a missile uh, a suite to use, but so do the Iranians. And the Iranian missiles are very accurate, as we've seen, too, because they fired into Syria with pinpoint precision. It targets at the same distance as any target in Israel. But Israel has like a three-layer uh, three layer defense system. They've got the uh, outer layer is the Arrow 3 missiles. The secondary layer is their slingshot, uh, which I guess is David's slingshot. And then the Iron Dome is for the short range stuff. So they got three layers of missile defense and they've all been tried and tested out. And they got a new Arrow 3 missile in there. So will the Iranian missiles get through? It may depend on just uh, how many get shot at them. Israel, I mean, Iran would definitely try to oversaturate the defense systems. That's always your uh, approach to try to take out a... Uh, a uh, missile defense system like that. Israel's got probably the, and they also have some Patriot missiles over there. Israel's got probably the, the strongest missile defense system of anybody for, especially for ballistic missiles. Cause we've only got uh, you know, a few missiles handful up in Fort Greeley and a couple in Vandenberg air force base. It's nothing to compare. Of course we've got our, uh, uh, we've got our Aegis systems, uh, Aegis ashore and Aegis at sea, uh, which is like the SM three missiles and so forth. Uh, which I've covered that in the past. So uh, could Iranian stealth, stealth drones attack critical oil infrastructure in Israel? That's a whole nother topic in here. Iran has lots of stealth drones. Uh, Iran's got a lot of missiles and a lot of capabilities to bring in these drones to bear. Now, it might be, I would su suppose that if uh, it, Iran really wanted to take out Tel Aviv, especially, they might do it, have some ship coming from the shore uh, with a, a nuke on board, so it would evade the missile defense. I don't know. Uh, Hoffa, hey there, uh, Lavera. How you doing, Lavera? Appreciate that. Salute to you for the nice super chat. Obviously, Greg, I haven't been present in chat, but just want you to know, incredibly, you are a rocket man. Thank you many times over. Well, salute to you. Thank you very much, Lavera Lakini. Wow, appreciate that. All right, so here we go. Guys, that's why you know, for the people watching in the morning, I pay attention to my chat room, especially for Super Chats, and I will go through and chat with everybody once we get through the new sector here. All right. U.S. said it destroyed the Houthi air defense drone system in the Red Sea area. But still, the Houthis are pounding, and uh, we haven't made a big difference over there. Uh, now, this is over with uh, getting to the Russian Ukrainian theater here. Uh, this article basically is saying that, uh, well, what is it saying? That ain't, that ain't an article I thought it was. Uh, the uh, 80th uh, separate air, oh yeah, it's the, the, the airborne division in uh, from Ukraine went in and destroyed the ammo depot in the, the next region. That uh, This is the kind of thing they should have been doing when they broke through the Russian lines. They could have taken out a lot of those and, and slowed down the supply of arms weapon systems to uh, from Russia fighting in Ukraine, but they failed to do that. Uh, so they got one here. That might give them a little reprieve, but uh, in a war of attrition, Ukraine just can't stand up over the long term. Could Belarus be preparing for war? We, we've talked about this before. Kremlin is preparing for terrorist attacks on the territory of Belarus to drag Belarusian dictator Lukashenko's regime into war. I don't know, guys. You know, we've seen where he was up there on the border with the uh, Zawaki Gap, with a lot of his forces, and he had his generals tell him they were prepared to move, to move into the Zawaki Gap. Now, he probably isn't really anxious to jump on that real fast, but uh, it could happen. So there's all kind of potential for things to, to ratchet up in the European theater. Uh, and Britain. This really don't make a lot of sense to me, this article. Britain must send troops to Ukraine or risk becoming a lost nation if Macron, Macaroni, as I like to call him, intervenes. 
the president of France. Because Macaroni is talking about sending French troops to Ukraine. Well, the basic gist of this article, well, if, if France does it, you know, we're supposed to be a big country like France, and if they can do it and we can't do it, then we're nobody. What? What's that got to do with it? I mean, Britain, you're an island. They're on the continent. I mean, it's, it don't equate. I mean, gee, why don't drag yourself into the war if you don't have to? Of course, France will probably drag all NATO in once they get hit and a, a, a vote the Article 5. So you're probably going anyway. But get your forces ready. You're, you're very much lacking, uh, uh, Great Britain. Your forces are very, very, very underpowered. But in response to that, of course, Medvedev is uh, saying that he's going to put out the maximum reward bounty on the heads of any NATO troops sent to Ukraine. Basically, what he's saying is they're going to pay money to any of their troops that take out a NATO troop. For every NATO troop that, that one of their guys takes out, they get money and a fair bit of it. So uh, they're, they're going to make it, you know, monetarily rewarding to any Russian troops that take out a NATO fighter. So they're serious about getting to, to NATO if they go into uh, Ukraine. Like I said, this stuff is just, it's not looking good. It's like escalating. And also, I reported you guys, is this article coming up or not? Okay, there it is. UN Watchdog says the status of the Russian-occupied Ukrainian nuclear plant, this is Zaporizhia, is extremely serious. And it's not because of the Russians. It's because Ukraine has been attacking Zaporizhia directly. The Ukrainians actually hit the dome of the reactor building with an explosive drone. Like, you got to be kidding me. What kind of knucklehead does something like that? That is knucklehead. That is stupid. I mean, it's going to hurt the Ukrainians more than anybody. Zaporizhia facility is one of the 10 biggest nuclear power plants in the world. It's the biggest one in Europe. Wow. Wow. This is, this is off the charts, guys. The, the dangerous game of the Russian occupiers, the Zaporizhia nuke, must be stopped according to this. But it's actually the Ukrainians that attacked it. So, you know, they're all playing with fire. Of course, you know, the Russians made it a military camp. Uh, you know, it's like a human shield, a nuclear power plant shield. Jeez, guys, this is, this is, they're on dangerous territory, very dangerous territory. It would make Chernobyl look like a Sunday school picnic. Jeez. Uh, what? In shot for Putin. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Looks like German almost. Ukraine bombs three Russian air bases, then vows to send its drones further into Russia. So not since 1987 is a, West German teenager flew a rented Cessna to Moscow's Red Square. What? Oh, well, they got crazy stuff going on over there, guys. Crazy stuff. Um, this is why you need to be prepared. You need to get ready. U.S. transfers thousands of seized Iranian guns and rocket launchers and munitions to Ukraine. This was stuff that the Iran uh, Iranians were sending to Venezuela that got intercepted by U.S. forces. And now they're sending all this stuff to Ukraine. Look at all the Kalashnikovs in here. Lots of Kalashnikovs, just a whole deck of them. AK-47s. Wow. Or derivatives thereof. And the U.S. Pacific commander says, very, very concerned about Chinese aggression in the South China Sea. It's, they keep putting lots of pressure on the Philippines. And we're talking about, you know, the Philippines having... The Sierra Madre ship that they got grounded on the second Thomas Shoal, and they're trying to supply it. And the uh, Chinese are really, really being super aggressive in trying to stop that. They're basically with water cannons, lasers, and sound equipment attacking the uh, resupply boats from uh, the Philippines. This is well within the Philippines exclusive economic zone, which should be recognized by treaties that the Chinese have signed. But if you, you know, think the signing uh, treaties with uh, uh, communist China is a good thing, China don't honor these things, guys. It's stupid to think that they're going to honor them. U.S., U.K., and Australia consider working with Japan on this AUKUS security pact. Now, this was Australia, the United Kingdom, and U.S. So now they're bringing Japan into it. So there's a Pacific alliance that's growing stronger. We've already had separate, we got... Uh, the United States has a direct pact uh, as a lot allies with uh, the Philippines and Japan. So who else is going to be in this? How's it going to grow? U.S. Army will hold combat training in the Philippines. 
the Hana skills of maritime, as maritime tensions rise. So we have forces in the Philippines. We're putting out new bases in the Philippines. And we're also got Marines. This is the Army. We got Marines on uh, Taiwanese islands that are right up next to China right now. So American forces are, are, are set to get hit by any of these actions, which is bound to drag America into this. Uh, Al Gore's idoms can't handle big words. <laughs> yeah, I got to watch what I say here. Uh, so is that what it said? Uh, AI Batwitch? Is that AI or Al Batwitch? I think it's AI probably. It looks like you capitalized it there. All right. China's huge sea buildup dwarfs Philippines push on the tiny island because, well, China's built up bases and built up the shoals everywhere. Given enough time, though, their bases, they're, they're made out of spit and tissue paper, the tofu construction. Some of them are already starting to crumble. So it may, it may make China want to act sooner rather than later. Also, China might decide to take advantage, as I said earlier, uh, moving, making this move while we still have a weak uh, El Presidente in the Capitol building here, in, or in the White House, I should say. Not the Capitol building, the White House. So security pact between U.S., uh, U.K., and Australia could be expanded. It's got China worried. Well, it should. So let's go on to the next article here. Asian countries shift alliances from U.S. to China as Beijing ramps up economic and military efforts. So maybe a lot of the other Asian nations are thinking that China's going to be the winner and they're trying to take the side of the winner. These countries find themselves in a Malayan like situation where the strong do what they can and the weak suffer what they must. So they're saying the West is weak. As they look to the West, they see the United States that's too easily abandons its partners, Israel, Ukraine, and Afghanistan. Remember how we pulled out, of, how we tucked our tail and ran from Afghanistan, left everything there? That's still coming to haunt us. So survey was conducted with 1,994 respondents from Asian nations and affiliations, including academia, think tanks, non-government organizations, media representatives, and government officials. Uh, you know, and so it didn't rate well for the West, guys. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go on. We're going to get through these articles pretty fast tonight, I think. So maybe won't be in here so awful light, late tonight, I hope. Start a little earlier than we have in the past. So American snap. In spite of all that, American CEO, CEOs overlook China risk at their own peril. How many times have the American companies went over there? I mean, we American companies built China. We built the economy in China, which China used to build its military. And they're still over there flirting with them right now. And what's China do? They go over there and you cut some deal with China. China steals your technology and turns around and resells it and undercuts you. What do they got a new plane out undercutting Boeing? They're flooding the car, uh, uh, the electrical vehicle car market right now, which threatens to undercut Tesla. Didn't Tesla have plants over there? Yeah. So this is what happens, guys. Real danger of doing business with China. Now, this really focuses on the fact that we're just building up China's industry, that we're building up their economy. And, and China just turns that back into military power. That's essentially what this says in just a few short words without going through and, and reading it tit for tat, which is not legal to do, by the way. So <laughs> and you can cite comments and uh, make citations from my article as long as you're editorializing it. That's fair use. But you got to be very careful with that. So on another little news, I think I put this one out of sequence where I wanted it. But this is worthy of knowing. Can a cup of tea keep the bug away study demonstrates that certain teas inactivate this virus i don't think i can say it out loud without getting a hit in saliva we're talking uh very hot especially black tea you know that's the kind a lot of us drink black tea you know hey hey yeah. and what if it has any effectivity on the boyd flu Saying the Boyd flu will be in the same category, guys. Yikes, reducing the virus. And let's see, you can drink it, uh, gargle it. I don't know if I want to gargle a hot tea. But they're saying, all right, so they, they, they rated five different types. Black tea was the most effective. Uh, reducing the virus by 99.9%. Now, something I've often told you guys is that 
the uh, some of them were 90 percent, but the black tea was 99.9 percent. The other teas, all of them were at least 90, 96 percent perfect, uh, effective within 10 seconds in the mouth. Wow, guys, that's pretty, pretty amazing. So what they were looking at was uh, raspberry zinger, eucalyptus mint, mint medley, green tea, and black tea. Green tea and black tea were the best, and black tea was the best overall. Just something for you guys to know. That's kind of easy to deal with. If you drink a lot of tea, it might be good for you. Now maybe you should drink it hot. I don't know. It didn't go in a lot of detail. Should it really be hot, or can it be iced tea? Uh, now... Crisis in California, a hostile attack could happen to us. Border mayor warns as migrant surge continues. Really? Well, according to Media Matters, the uh, I'm going to do another video on this on Green Grids. According to Media Matters, oh, there's nothing to worry about. Oh, everything's fine and good. And if you oppose all these guys crossing the border, you are a uh, Nazi bigoted racist. That's what Media Matters says. I actually got an article on that. And I guess um, a lot of people in the public are believing that side because I got really attacked for putting a little joke post on Facebook by a lot of people that were bought into that philosophy. Thought that the whole reason I was against the immigration uh, as it's going was due to racism. No, it's not. I love Mexican people. That's bull crap. You know, it's it, but we want a vet who's coming across the border. We want security, but they don't get that because they think they ain't that security problem. Yeah, they're knuckleheads. Oh, yeah. If you want good antioxidant, uh, I got a deal also. I just saw somebody mention antioxidant on uh, uh, C60. You can check my links out for that. C60 is the most powerful antioxidant you can probably get. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I got to use uh, code GreenGregs10. You'll get 10% off there. 10% off if you use code GreenGregs10. Somebody brought up the antioxidants. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, now, now we're talking about bugs. CDC is taking bird flu very seriously and plans them to mass produce. What? What's to say it will go out when it's still experimental? What do y'all think? If you think they'll send this, uh, put it out on an experimental basis and make it mandatory, put a one in the chat room. You know, we've got this uh, treaty that we've been that's being pushed with a, WHO, which basically gives them purview and power of the United States government to enforce things. Yikes, guys. You know, some of us got out of that last round because we were able to use uh, exemptions like religious exemptions. Will that work next time around? So, you know, what they're saying is this guy, this has got in beef cattle, it's got in dairy cattle, so it's now spreading among mammals. A, a couple of people have got it now in the states uh but they got well there's no human human transmission yet you know i did a video on this like uh, a couple of years ago saying you know what if you're raising chickens you're uh, you, you know you're still your biggest risk of getting this from another person should it go human to human even if it starts spreading the, the idea that you're going to get it from your livestock it's still pretty low and again the prospects of you getting something like this got to do with viral loads so it's how you handle your birds or your cows and what health precautions you take if you have to, wear gloves and, 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 you know, take appropriate health precautions, deal them with your livestock. But the chances of getting livestock probably directly, it's existent, people, it's happened, and the fatality rate is very high when that happens. But the probability is still a bit low. But if, once it goes human transmissible, you would worry about more about getting it from people. So even if you did have livestock, so when it starts moving on people, that doesn't mean you got to get rid of your flock. But that's not what they're going to tell you. Oh, you can't have no cows. They hate cattle. You can't have no chickens. You know, over in the United Kingdom, they're requiring people to register their birds. All their birds. Once something's registered, they can take it up, right? And this could hit our food supply here in the United States. They're talking about the threat to our eggs because this is this, all the layer hens have got it now. Cow Maine Foods, largest producer of eggs. U.S. finds bird flus in chicken at Texas plant. Are we about to see egg prices surge even more? I just paid uh, 467 No, no, it's more than I paid nearly $5 for a 18-pack uh, of eggs, nearly $5. And what would have been about 
two bucks uh, just about a year ago. So, but they tell us we don't have no inflation. No, there's no inflation. Now, some student in the United Kingdom caught a strain and he passed away real fast. I mean, this will happen. It does happen. But these are, you know, there's not a lot of cases of it right now. The case number is still pretty low. So uh, uh, just pay attention, guys. Pay attention what you do. Best buy on loose tea as most tea have planted. Yeah, I need to get, where's the best, best, you go to best buy. Who's got the best buy on loose tea, uh, Jordy Prepper? I like to know because mine is, but what I've been getting is coming in bags. I'm going to find a deal for loose tea. I don't want to buy it in bags anymore. Because the bags, the paper bags, actually have those darn forever uh, chemicals in them. Um, what you need to know about eating meat, dairy, and eggs during the bird flu outbreak, according to food safety expert, we'll cook everything well. Pasteurized animal products should still be safe to consume, it says. Uh, raw meat, dairy, eggs might not be safe right now. Well, okay. Cook it, guys. Cook it. And, you know, be careful well, the protocols is you're handling stuff that's raw with your hands and wash before, wash after. But that's protocols you should have been following anyway. Uh, me, I like to spritz alcohol. I'm real. I use alcohol real, real liberally on my hands when I'm doing stuff. Uh, it will sanitize your hand in seven seconds. Uh, or anything you spray it on white vinegar takes about twenty seconds. Now, but white vinegar is food grade. So uh, if you're got to spray anything directly on food, white vinegar. I, I use white vinegar as a veggie wash. You can wash your eggs with white vinegar just before you uh, crack them. So just consider those things. A lot of your people that camp out in vans, like I did the last half of la last year, wash their dishes with white vinegar. So just just things that are worth knowing, guys. Little tips for you if you're, you know, how you're going to get through this situation, especially if you're living in a van or, you know, you might want that generator I just showed you earlier. It's got the solar power uh and all that good stuff so check that out go back to go to prep with greg and check that deal out I, that's a great price deal for a system that's got better capabilities than the stuff i paid a lot more for last summer uh now this is what's scary we're now spending more on debt interest than defense the interest on our debt has now exceeded our defense budget as our debt grows it will start to be bigger and bigger is a proportion of our total expenditures, especially if interest rates go up. And there's been some claims that interest rates might even go up to 8%. It may go up again. Yikes, guys. Um, and as, the, as we accumulate more and more debt, at some point, the interest on the debt will be the, will be the bulk of the budget. That's a scary thing. This is why we can't continue to accumulate debt like we've been doing. You know, that we, they're just kind of, oh, we just added all these jobs. We got well, a lot of them are government jobs. The government has been expanded, even though our federal debt is expanded. The government's been expanded rapidly. Jeez, we can't afford this. Also, um, <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're just in trouble. This is just, and also, a lot of those jobs, turns out they're a lot part time jobs or they're, they're accounting so called self employed people, which are basically people got laid off that are trying to make their own way uh, just because they've uh, out, run out of unemployment or whatever. Uh, yeah, here it is. Jamie Dimon warns interest rates could soar above 8%, throwing doubt on a soft landing in the economy. It's also going to play havoc on those interest rates in our debt. No, I don't want to mess with that page anymore. Ah, and Bank of America sees gold at $3,000, warns of copper supply crisis. So copper is really going up. They're afraid we're going to have an issue of getting copper supply. Well, copper we use uh, throughout our industry. We use copper. It's very critical for our electrical systems, especially when we're supposed to be expanding the grid to deal with all this electrification. They want to make everything electric while they're shutting down power plants. Oh, geez, guys. Uh, gold price is nearly 19% uh, in the present rally, and according to Robert Miller, you ain't seen nothing yet. They're expecting it to soar. That's what these guys are expecting. So I don't know. I'm not an economic analyst or uh, investment advisor. But, you know, hey, myself, I think this is a good deal, especially when they got a deal here. It says uh, if you find a better price somewhere else, they'll meet it or beat it. And this is Defy the Grid. If you go to Defy the Grid, use the code 
green uh, green gregs and you'll get one percent off use the code green gigs you can get uh bars you can get rounds bullion you know the coins or you can get these gold bats which i like because uh they're small they're printed out in a, a bill form it is pure gold and like this one i got here that's one thousandth of, of a troy ounce so that means you can buy bread and eggs with it <laughs> even with eggs going up price of gold is going to be even faster yeah and of course biden is trying to force more stuff on electric vehicles and he's wanting to throw your tax dollars in supporting that even guys hmm and this article claims that that is a what what do y'all think and yet americans don't want it more americans say they won't buy evs amid president tater heads crack down on gas cars If the people that got them, that bought them early, the early adopters, they're the ones that wanted it. Beyond that, people are, they don't want no part of this. So it's been, they're trying to force it on everybody. You know, they don't want to make it where you can't buy any vehicle in just a few years unless it's an EV. Wow. Yeah, Sunlight's got the UV. UV kills everything. So a Texas school fund has one thing I hate about Fox News. It wants to play something just as soon as you open it. I just hate going to Fox News sites for that. Bugs me. So anyway, the good news is here that Texas has canceled an eight point five billion investment with BlackRock because BlackRock is out pushing against petroleum based fuels. And so Texas says, well, the heck with you. So uh, Texas is pushing back. So there is some hope in the, this crazy stuff that's going on. Biden administration wires ways decision that could shutter U.S. coal plants two years early. Well, they didn't shut down a bunch. They started under Obama, his predecessor. So they're claiming, oh, these for stand standards will protect Public health, really? Well, when you ain't got any power and you can't run your CPAP or, or, or your uh, dialysis machine, is that going to help your health? You tell me. When we start having roving brownouts and blackouts like California has, yeah, it's going to get far worse because they just said that the growth in the AI industry and the servers for that is going to uh, over over uh, put over demand on our power grid within a year. That they need more power than we can produce just for that alone. Not to mention, they're trying to force the entire transportation system onto the electric grid. They're trying to take all your appliances and make them electric. And I want you to use them propane. And go look on my channel for my video, my little short video called Propane. Yeah, you'll get a kick out of it. So, all right, we're going to be through the news here in a few minutes, guys. We're getting through it quick tonight. Uh, I say quick. We're already 42 minutes in. Biden White House tries to protect that. What? Of course they are. So they're trying to pass laws and uh, not laws, but uh, regulations to make it where the next president just can't go in and do what ha Javier Millet has done in Argentina and cutting the size of the bureaucracy. What I said, the bureaucracy just grew a bunch. All these new jobs added. It adds our federal deficit. How are we going to solve our problems when they throw all these roadblocks in the way? It just it's just precipitating a coming crash. Oh, yeah, Boeing pain deliveries fell off in the last quarter because they're having so much problem with this uh, uh, 737 MAX door blowout and several other things. No, they just had an engine fall off a plane. Just It was one of the articles I saw either early this morning, I think, or yesterday. Uh, yeah, they just had a plane that had an engine fall off. What's going on, Boeing? I might should do a special video on that. Oh, my gosh, guys. All righty, earthquakes. Well, so we're just tape mag rising. Looks like we just had one in uh, Sustina, Alaska. That's so getting over close to the Fairbanks region. We got uh, out in the Lucians, as always, uh, shaking 4.9 there, uh, 3.6 there. Down here in Puerto Rico, well, they're dancing. Hey, Rodney, another two bucks. Well, slid you, Rodney. Thank you very much. The super chat. Appreciate that. Started taking mulling lately. Yeah, that's really good for your lungs. Yeah, it's one thing you could smoke that's actually good for your lungs. Now, look at this, guys. 
we got some big ones out here in Indonesia area. Let's see, where is that? Let's go in. That's not Indonesia. Let's, uh, let's go in here and look at this earthquakes here. This is a this outer ring is a 6.6, .6, and it is in uh, Tupelo, Indonesia. And it's got an aftershock, uh, 4.5, same place, of course. And Taiwan's got an aftershock, so we're still having aftershocks in Hulain City. Quality control is important. Yeah, X Dragon. See, Boeing has what's supposed to be in a lot of quality control, but you know, they had a whistleblower who uh, decided to self terminate, allegedly, the day before he was to make another testimony. Wow. Well, there's some other whistleblowers coming out now. Being a Boeing whistleblower is a dangerous thing to be. I could have done an article. I could do a whole show just on that stuff. 5.0 there in China, in Yang. Yangning, China. I'm, not, I'm probably not saying that right. We got one over here. Uh, was this just east of the Timor region, Papua New Guinea? Okay. Whoops. Where did I go here? Went in. Papa's popping. And he's over here in the Tonga area. Let's see, Fiji Islands. What's that? Yeah, they got some smaller ones, 4.5. 4.9 and three. Oh, that's a pretty good earthquake. That's bigger than the one that hit New York that or New Jersey that really shook New York so hard. Is this Tajikistan or Afghanistan? It's right on the border. Tajikistan 4.0. Yeah, so there's still some earthquakes going on. Not as heavy as it was a couple of days ago, but there's still a lot of shaking. Mid Atlantic Ridge, we expect them there. 4.8. Argentina 4.5. 4.5. Chile got a 4.6, 4.3. But here on the West Coast, we got some stuff going off. Mexico, 4.3. This is around uh, Mexico. I don't have a senior. I don't know how you pronounce that. But this is up here in California on the New Madrid. Not New Madrid. On the uh, San Andres Fault, 3.5 in Bannon, California. And Empire, Nevada, 2.6. Uh, nothing going on in tech between the Texas and New Mexico area. It's quiet there tonight. That's unusual. All right, enough for the earthquakes. Space weather. You got a this sunspot is probably not too dangerous. I mean, you got to have a uh, north and south magnetic pole to really throw up big flares. Uh, I think the other side of the sun may still have some good sized sunspots, but everything is really. Quiet with a chance of flares. <laughs> There's your uh, eclipse. I got a picture of an eclipse of the airplane in the picture. The aurora don't look too bad at the moment. Look at the asteroid threat. Nothing becoming, nothing coming between the Earth and the Moon soon. That's good news. At least nothing that we know of. We always discover a lot of these rocks right as they're whizzing by. After they pass by, if we're lucky, we catch them ahead of time. Now, guys, you need to be weather aware if you're in Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, or even Tennessee. We got some big storms out here brewing. Uh, they've been throwing up a lot of storms all day. Uh, yesterday, which is, I still call it today because it's the same waking period for me. Uh, and the, tomorrow they're coming into Alabama. All this stuff will be moving east. We'll look at that in more detail shortly. But for now, we're going to stop the share for just a little bit. And we'll go into the chat room because now it is the news portion of this cast is over at uh, 49 minutes. So for the breakfast people who've been watching for breakfast, they like to know when the news part's over. But, so we're going to go to the chat room for a little bit. Then we'll come back and go through the weather. And hopefully we can end it a little earlier this morning or than we've been doing. Wow. So been a busy day for me. I've had uh, two people come look at my place here. And I actually had a video I did. If you haven't noticed, I did a video on Galactic Gregs that I had actually been trying to collect. That's a video I wanted to do in some fashion for a couple months. 
and just more stuff kept accumulating. I just kept adding to it. And, you know, it was going to originally be a short video and just, I got so much stuff on it, you know, I made it a fair video, but that was kind of holding me back from putting videos on there because I really didn't have everything to put it together just the time. Now that I knocked that one, I'm probably do a lot of uh, videos. I can do a lot quicker on just a lot of the ongoing space topics. Um, but I do have some de in-depth topics. So I could definitely find time, but uh, hopefully I get some more content on galactic Greg's. And I'll continue content here in Green Greg's. I've got a bunch of articles on the do on the immigration thing for uh, Green Greg's channel. And one of the reasons I want to do that and hit it is because just the way uh, media matters and that whole uh, scenario, what they're putting out has got a lot of the country, a lot of the United States thinking everything is hunky dory with the border. Everything is fine. And if you don't agree with that, you are a this, that, or the other name calling, all kind of stuff. I mean, I got attacked seriously on my facebook channel by a lot of people who bought into that other philosophy and they haven't seen the other side they said well show me articles show me show me show me i didn't have time to post a bunch of articles so i'm gonna do a video where i just rack a bunch of them up and then i'm gonna throw it on there so crazy it's crazy hey uh floyd how you doing wise man hearing them will gain more wisdom and discerning man will learn to be proverbs 1.5 and Aramaic. Okay. Well, I don't read Hebrew, Floyd. So uh, back up your backup plan. That's a good idea there, x -Dragon. All right, I'm going to scroll to the top and see what's in the chat here. And I'm getting some super chats tonight. Lavera, that was real generous of you. Appreciate that. And Rodney. All right. So good, good day, Greg. Thanks for the heads up. Good day. Uh, Arnold is at number one. Traveler One, good morning. Mag Rising. Out in Alaska. Mag's been with us for a while. Captain Trips, good morning. Mike Coban, John Edwards. John, I got some coffee. And coffee's got its help. Coffee fights uh, dementia, so they say. I'm not a medical doctor. I got to put a disclaimer. Thanks to our wonderful freedom of speech brought to us by the AMA and all those regulatory agencies who are unelected, who regulate us and, and attack our constitution. You can't throw, say something without throwing a disclaimer. I'm not a medical doctor. See your medical doctor if you want advice. And he will prescribe you a bunch of pills that come to you straight from the AMA and the petroleum companies. Thank you, AMA. <laughs> I like my wild herbs. Mm. Coffee, black tea, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, oh, Jed's a millionaire. Ken folks said, Jed, move away from there. <laughs> California is a place you don't want to be. <laughs> Side note, lots of AMs this moment, yes. Out went nuclear quickly. That's scary. Yes. Hey, Michelle. Black sheep. Hello to you. Much love back. Bobby Birch. How do y'all? Where are you from, Bobby? Thank you for sharing the links there, uh, Rodney. I think New Days is out. She was. She spent about three or four days. She only. No, I think over span of four days, she only got four hours sleep. Bless her heart. She was pushing hard. She had a lot of company in her house. She was working crazy hours. Bless her heart. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing the link there for the Green Gregs. I uh, need to check that in a little bit and see if I'm getting any traffic coming through there. But the thing is, if you go to that site, uh, I get to keep a bigger portion of it than the Super Chat. So... Yeah, I'll check that and I'll check it again a little bit. Uh, Michelle gave me a nice super chat earlier on my when I was doing the uh, Green Gregs. So that's much appreciated. Um, now, when, now, excuse me, when I was doing the Galactic Gregs video, so she's already donated today. Oh, we got another, did we get another donation? Scroll down. Yes, sir, Lavera. Wow. Salute you. Too big on some Lavera tonight. Thank you, Lavera. I much appreciate that. You're awesome. Makes my day. That 
that's makes the live streams worthwhile. I am greatly appreciative of that. All right. That is awesome. Killer Smurf, good to see you back. Saw you earlier tonight or today. Yeah, everybody hit the thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe, bang the notification bell, and click all. Most of the people subscribed to my channel have not clicked all. I saw a statistic on just a very small portion of clicked all. Now, it may be they got unclicked. It may be why a lot of you aren't getting notifications. Go back and make sure that you click on. People get unsubscribed all the time. Make sure you're still subscribed. Bahama Mama. Hey, Greg, good to see you. Good to see you, too. It's a great name, Bahama Mama. <laughs> I like things that are poetic. I'm being the warrior poet that I am. Uh, David Potter, good to see you back. Okay, I know what I can do. Congress will have to pass a law that the president has to be smarter than a third grader. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -wee. That's amazing. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Floyd Stinson says, I feel there are there will be no more presidential. Oh, that may be. We may never have another election. I, there's there's a lot of quite, a lot of people feel that way. We really wonder about it. Really, really wonder what's coming, guys. Especially if we go to a big, ugly war. I know it might be what they want, just to keep the deep state in power. You know, the deep state does not want to give up power. Oops, I got to watch what I'm saying here. Really lovely and comforting to see so many old profile names in chat, says Lavera Lefkin. Glad to see you in here. Intermix Hector, how you doing? All right. Floyd Stenson says, John, 1427, peace is what I leave you with. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Yeah, what the world gives us is the opposite. Do not be worried, upset. Do not be afraid. I tell you, don't be scared. Be prepared. So, yeah, you got to be right with your maker. Be centered within, right with the maker. And then take care of your preps, your family. And then you can send out to friends. Uh, who's the idiots, Arnold? Now, Floyd Stenson's quote in Ephesians, where we are not fighting against human beings, but against the wicked spiritual forces in the heaven. In the heavenly world, the rulers, authorities, and the cosmic powers of this dark age. Yeah, you, know, you got to wonder where some of those dark powers come from. Fallen angels. Hmm. See my video I put on uh, galactic graves. I tried to tread lightly in that area. I think most of you know where I, where I really come from there, what I think that stuff really is. I don't think it's good. I don't think there's nothing good about it. Well, there, there may be some good and dark forces, you know, angels and demons. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, world we're living in. It is extravagant. Oh, did they give me on the I word? Huh? What is that? Should Johnson pass military aid for Ukraine while rejecting conservative parties? The US? Yeah, see, no, our border should be the top priority. Top priority. He is caving. Oh, oh, that's the I word. Okay, oh, hey, I bet which, yeah. Got it. Vera says, must have love with idiots, Arnold. I certainly uh, have been such. I'm trying to evolve into a genius, but it's slow going. <laughs> well, just keep trying, you know. Uh, a lot of genius just comes from hard work. It comes from uh, spending the time to study things and try to understand them, put them all together, 
and are just living long and acquiring wisdom. And wisdom is learned from doing making bad moves. That's <laughs> mistakes give you more wisdom than anything you'll ever come across. But if you often know, I tell you that everybody in the world, a lot, you know, everybody's pretty much the same inside except for the sociopaths and the psychopaths. Unfortunately, they float to the top and tend to run corporations and governments. And then they want to pit us and play us all against each other. And you got to understand that. But when it comes to person to person, uh, now that people have different worldviews, and a lot of times those are set up by organizations such as Media Manners. Uh, so um, it's important, though, to understand the worldview of the other people and try to communicate with them. You can't communicate with them unless you at least understand their worldview. And then um, that's how you do it. So I tell everybody, you got to put on, you know, everybody takes in information to reinforce things. It's called like, confirmation bias. You know, you take in information. That supports the worldview. You you interpret it by the worldview you already hold, and it just everything you see just further reinforces that. Typically, and of course, social media uh, makes sure that that takes place to a higher degree than it used to. But uh, to, if you really want to understand the other person, you got to put on their rose-colored glasses. In addition, your own, you got to be able to or take yours off and, and and step back and you know try to see the world at a bigger level. But you know, I actually did a video called Rose-Colored Glasses, and I bought these glasses at a gas station. While I was making that trip, so I, I need to find some something close to a rose-colored set of eyeglasses so I could do this video and talk this stuff. And I did when I was I was going through Wedowie, Alabama, when I was making that video. Uh, that is where uh, Brad with uh, what's his channel? Um, shoot, getting brain lock right now. You know who Brad is? He's got to be. I watch him every day, and I can't think of his channel name off the top of my head. Anyway, he's he lives in that area. And I got a friend that's down there, too. Uh, I hear there's a pill that you can buy for that situation. Oh, million dollars a dose. Whoa, oh, Arnold. <laughs> Four times. Jordy Prepper. Black tea has the best overall health benefits. I drank a few kinds to cover more bases. You know, they always recommend green tea. The black tea is really powerful. And that's your main thing. So I need to get a good source for loot. Loose, affordable black tea. That's one I need to find. There is a tea shop in Sholo. I know that. So when I'm in Arizona, I know where to go. I've got to shop around in my area here. I, I, I usually get people in the chat room from this area, too. Uh, I get a lot of people in my chat rooms here from North Alabama and from Arizona, because I guess because I'm so connected to both areas. So if there's anybody in here from Alabama that knows where I can find a good source of black tea, let me know. Loose black tea. Uh, let's see. Uh, James Couch, find yourself a local tea master. Yeah, right, I need to find out who they are. I know one place I might go. There's a shop up in uh, Elkton, Tennessee, just above me called uh, Terps. I know the girl who started that shop. It's herbal, blah, blah, blah stuff, all that stuff. She might have it. I get my tea from the hump. From the humblest over at the Tipsy store in Astoria, Oregon. Well, I guess I'm not traveling to Astoria, Oregon to buy a bag of tea. <laughs> White vinegar is what I use as a hand sanitizer. Yeah, a lot of people do that. It will work. It won't tend to dry your hands out like a lot of people say. Alcohol. I don't have any problem using alcohol. I've been using alcohol for years. It don't cause me any problem. And that's 91%, which is hard to get around here. I probably bought this in Arizona. I have a hard time finding 91% in this area. <laughs> used to get it before the <laughs> broke out. It used to be common around here, but some things just I don't see anymore. There are, you know, I haven't seen since the <laughs> broke out a pack of uh, salami with cotto, you know, cotto salami with the peppercorns in it. I used to love to eat that. I haven't seen it since 2019. Boris Gump is smarter than the POTUS. Amen to that. <laughs> he bought stock and apple. Yes, sir. Hybrid wouldn't have caused a monopoly. Uh, do your house cleaning more. Look after your friend and family you love. Okay, in a mix. That makes sense. Now, long-term box inspector. Who's that? Whistling can be fatal. What? Whistling? How's whistling fatal? 
That's supposed to like a bird. I haven't done it much. I used to get uh, whistle beetle songs. It was one that used to be a real challenge. I mastered it for a long time. I can't do it now. I haven't done it in so long. I've not practiced. I'm not a practice. I used to just whistle like a bird. And if I got, if I did it some more, I could do it. Love cooking, but news on war on my TV, my food. <laughs> Turn my TV off. Yeah, I usually eat dinner while I'm watching. That's about the only time I ever watch YouTube videos. That's when I'm eating meals. I'm actually fasting on Mondays and Thursdays now. And I've lost weight. I've lost a fair bit of weight. So I actually want to get on the scales this morning because I fasted yesterday. I was actually down to 229.2 or something like that, or 0.4, which I'm um, going down, going down. When I went to Arizona, I was, I'd lost weight before I went to Arizona. I was like 230, no, 236. And then I gained weight. Over, when I got back, even though I was not eating that well when I was out there, I guess because I was active, I was only 245. But I have, uh, over the winter, I gained up to 250-something, 254 maybe. But I've lost it. Now I'm down to uh, 229.2. I'll gain a little bit today since I'm eating again. But overall, I'm losing weight every week. I used, first time I went on a low-carb diet, I ate, you know, regular times, but I was on low-carb. I lost 100 pounds. But I found that as I got older, that wasn't working for me. So I now I've started intermittent uh fasting but uh, the the idea of keeping it within eight hours that don't work for me it's the the actual skip a day or two is what's really working for me best right now look uh for the tree huggers they can teach you where to find things <laughs> there you go uh 6 10 p.m australia good car sales uh saying these oh, okay uh extra i'm personally grateful for the for your point of view, with three points, you can triangulate. There you go. You can always triangulate with three points. Even though they have eyes, even uh, Arnold says, even though they have eyes to see and ears to hear, they don't use their spiritual eyes or ears. That's true. Uh, south coast weather, cool and rainy. Uh, little love fruit with salad uh god 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 bless me okay um whistle dixie hey donnie <laughs> all righty all right. Hi, Greg. Just tuning in. Have you covered the black back-to-back -back EMs from this morning, two to three on top of each other at all times? Yeah, I did mention that early on. I also talked about how the Bolton of Atomic Scientists said that uh, Iran and Israel go to war. It's going to escalate nuclear really fast. That's what they said from the simulations they did. So watch out. Watch out, guys. Cheer weather. How you doing, buddy? Sure weather, what's coming here? What are we going to see here tomorrow? He uh, He's my weather forecaster. Uh, Greg, brother, he meant the whistleblower. Oh! <laughs> yes, I get it. I'm sorry. Yeah, being a Boeing whistleblower is very problematic, very risky these days. <laughs> That's good to have Chewy in the house. Show maiden, good to see you too. Uh, intermix Hector, love hugs and kisses uh, for good Mexican and good Mexican food. Hey, I like good Mexican food. Uh, there's a Mexican restaurant on Bummy that makes a quesadilla that's that thick. <laughs> you can go there and get a beef quesadilla for very little money. That thing's huge. It's like, how do they afford that? You want beef? That's a place to go to. There's also a restaurant up in Ardmore on the Alabama side of Ardmore. Ardmore's Main Street's the state line. I go to Ardmore more than I go to Huntsville. Um, lots more, actually. Uh, I'm in Ardmore like every other day. I go to Huntsville like every other week. <laughs> Just stay out of the traffic. Um, there is a uh, restaurant there called Mildred's. Not ate there in a while, but they got a big buffet. And you can eat there pretty cheap. It's pretty good food. 
uh, if anybody's in the area. Eddie Bowie, uh, good morning. And right, Greg, I fell for that fake mute. Oh, <laughs> so uh, Rodney, Greg, was your whistling the, the sound of silence? I, oh, you did not hear it. Well, I'm, I got to practice whistling and get it back up. I used to whistle really good. Just haven't been doing it much. I'll do that too. In between your teeth, like the old man. <laughs> I used to couldn't whistle that way, but I always was able to whistle tunes. But if I practice it, I just I'm, I'm out of practice for whistling. Mm. I get your lips wet. Yeah. <laughs> Kim Possible. I love whistling to you while I drive to work. No, I'm not driving yet. Just ready to leave. <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, Intermits. Uh, USA. Uh, all right, guys. So, with Arnold Smith, time for Greg to consider doing an MP Faraday Cage video. I actually did cover that in my MP video. If you watch my MP survival video, I've talked fairly cages in there. Uh, you can't whistle. Okay, start a mouse. Uh, or post a video from the past video list. Oh, I got a bunch of videos with Dr. Peter Vince Prada. Now, we didn't talk about how to make a Faraday cage, but uh, just uh, search, go to the videos on my channel, and when you get that little hourglass, click on it and search Pry, P-R-Y, and there's several videos with him. So make sure you kind of watch those. And also look for videos I did with, I uh, uh, sure can't pronounce his name right now. I'm getting brain locked. Anyway, Mike not picking up. It's not getting whistling. Really? You get that? I don't know. Maybe it's because the frequency is too high. I don't know. <clears throat> Vera, I'm a little surprised that Tammy George isn't in chat. Tammy George? Chatted briefly uh, the other day. Huh. Tammy George. Bullhead City Food. What's it? Bullhead City Food. So it's not coming through. Wow. I was actually pretty loud with it. It must just be a frequency thing. Huh. That's interesting. I didn't know that would not be picked up by the mic. Nothing. Too high frequency, I guess. Wow. Oh, yeah, okay, so. Greg, your, your heavy weather will come tomorrow around 7 p.m. or so. There will be a split in the system, and most heavy weather will go towards Birmingham and the other up into Tennessee. Now, as long as it goes around me, I'll be happy. You know, a couple of days ago, we had a, a funnel cloud that passed right over my house. And I got the warning for it when I was almost home from actually having, I was up in the Ardmore area. I turned around and just bugged back in that direction. Now, somebody asked me, why did I go north? Because the storm was here, go southeast, to, uh, southwest to northeast. But there was just a whole lot of clouds to the south. And I just thought I would escape those. I got clear of it. I got out before they got to me. I even turned my speaker up 100% and still nothing. It must be a frequency thing. The whistling's a higher frequency. Oh, well, sorry about that. Oh, Fort Bragg, how you doing? Good to see you, buddy. <clears throat> I spent some time at Fort Bragg. Yes, sir. So uh, glad to see you in the house, old Fort Bragg. What's the, what's the activity out there in the Fort Bragg area? We can good to see if we can see Samuel Turner in here. He's from that area. James Couch, far out. It's a, uh, oh, it's not Couch, it's Crouch. Okay, pardon me. So a lot of people, there's a lot of couch people the name couch around. I'll say there's a lot of couches around here. <laughs> there's that too. Uh, Visali, California. Weather is good to all. God bless in your army. Love you. Love you. All right. Intermix. Good to hear that. Oh, for Brad. Just aviation traffic. Yeah, the last I lived when I first moved up there, I moved out to Ray Road. I was about 12 miles north of Spring Lake, North Carolina. But then I moved right into 
uh, almost right in the Spring Lake. I lived in what was known as a flight side trailer park right across from the entrance way to uh, Pope Air Force Base. I remember when we did our first operation over there in the Gulf War uh, with a, a wreck. The, all the news crews set up right there at the entryway to uh, Pope Air Force Base because that's where the the uh, Army would go to take off for, to be deployed, 82nd Airborne and such. And so I thought, wow, they're at the entrance way of my old trailer park because they were actually across the street from that entrance. So I, I, so I know exactly where they're at. They're at the entrance way. I used to drive through every day. <laughs> Keep an eye on the sky. We'll do that. Uh, welcome back, folks. We appreciate you visiting us. Well, thank you, Arnold. So, yeah, we're actually picking up some people in the uh, room here. The people just coming here, I've just gone through the news. We're in our just the chat session. The news part was about the first 49 minutes. I'm going to go through weather again here in a little bit. Uh, Show me, I've told you before, no point trying to lose weight fasting before the war. Well, I still got plenty to go. <laughs> I just need to be able to be lighter on my feet so my joint just don't hurt as much. So I I'm, I feel better when I lose a little bit, you know. So uh, I I still got plenty of flesh on me. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I got a long way to go. When I was in basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, I used to eat everything I could put my hands on. If I could grab it, I ate it. I ate like a horse and I lost weight. I got down to 133 pounds. I look like a poor starving Somalian. I was all muscle. And I could do push-ups for an hour and, and nonstop. I could do, I could, you know, run, hike. I could do it when I was young. I used to be powerful. I used to do a lot of running. I used to get out and run, even when I gained weight and was the weight I'm at right now, I used to run. And I paid for it though. It's, I destroyed my ankles doing that. But I, I used to be strong. I used to have my calf muscles used to be this big. Both my legs. I had humongous calf muscles on my legs. I mean, huge. Oh, my God. I could run. I could kick. I could I could go hiking all day long. I could hike. I could run for hours. I could, I could go anywhere on foot. Oh, my gosh. I can't do it now. I dreamed about the other day. John Taylor. How you doing, John Taylor? I could go anywhere, man. I was strong. I used to run 12 miles every other day. But I'm paying for it now. Big time. But when I got plantar fasciitis, I started riding a bicycle. I'd ride a bicycle 20 miles every, every other day for a while. And then it messed up my knees. It's like, geez. <laughs> Lot force gump. Oh, yeah. Man, I could run. I could do all kind of stuff. And I never had long legs, but I used to could, if I was with a military group, I'd be front. I run everybody. <laughs> My dad could run. My uh, youngest daughter was on track team for some time. Of course, she's got Kenyan blood in her too. Kenyans are known for running, so she had two ancestral running lines in her. Uh, my older daughter runs marathons and stuff like that. She runs like that, so she runs a competition. John Taylor, salute to you. Thank you for the super chat. All right. I'm most appreciative, sir. That's the 20th Super Chat and live stream from John Taylor, the 20th. Well, salute and thank you, John. I need to get back on my push bike. There you go. Run, Forrest Allison. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate that. Salute to all you, LaVera, Rodney, and John Taylor. You super chatters tonight. All right, let's look at some other guys. Let's go back in here and see. We got storms. We got storms. So let's go back into the share screen. We got to look at these storms because right now they're. We got snow coming down toward Denver. I was at a conference in Denver when uh, a Memorial Day weekend and snowed there. Memorial Day weekend in Denver. Of course, I've seen people ice fish in Alaska, standing on a lake with cutting holes in the lake. In the month of May. <laughs> Imagine that. So, uh, yeah, we got some pretty hefty storms right here, according to this. So let me pull it, pull this thing up a little bit. Let me pull the whole thing. Oh, I got to pull the whole screen up because I can't get the controls to the bottom. Wow, oh, I knocked things off. I just jerked that out. Shoot. I don't know what I was trying to do. 
I'll move the whole thing up where I can get the controls on the bottom. Squeeze the screen down a little bit, pull it up. There we are. There's the scroll bar. It's missing the scroll bar. Actually, it's not up to minute. Let's bring it up to minute. There it is. Yeah, this stuff's moved a little bit. I'm going to clock this through a little bit. Watch these storms progress. Then New Orleans catching it uh, 3 p.m. today. That's a big storm in Arkansas. It's in eastern Arkansas. Hopefully, I miss Michelle. Looks like it's coming up Easter. Hey, Tracy Broken Wing, glad to see you in the house. Look at that. Going into Memphis, real heavy in Memphis. Birmingham's getting hit about 6 p.m. tomorrow, real heavy. Yeah, this is what Chewy's talking about. It looks like it is splitting. North into Tennessee and just south of, whoop, got a little bit in my area there. About 11 p.m. Storms usually start dying down a little bit at that time. Let's hope that that's died down. I have to really pay attention around 11 p.m. I'm actually planning to go to a program. Uh, no, this is Wednesday. Now, Thursday night, I'm going to be at a program of the Huntsville, Alabama L5 Society, an organization I started back in 1983. We got a speaker. I will probably record that and post it on Galactic Gregs. Look at that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I ain't getting the worst of it. It looks like I'll get a pretty good storm. That's 3 a.m. at the Georgia-Alabama line. And on, up in Illinois. This looks pretty powerful in this area right here. North Georgia right there. That's where some of my ancestors. The Allison family moved in here. Oh, yeah, one of the things one of those woke knuckleheads uh, posted against, well, your ancestors come in and tuck land from the Indians. No, they, it's the, he said the Allison family is fact. I said, no, they didn't. The Allison family went down on a, a, a wagon caravan and settled into here and bought their land directly from the Cherokee tribe, paid them a good price for their land, and lived among them and intermixed with them. Most of the Allison in that area are really brown-eyed, dark-haired people, dark skin. most of them in that area because they, inter they intermix pretty heavily with the Cherokee. And they, lived at, they lived at one with the Cherokee people. They moved in. They were the first white settlers that moved into the area. And they lived with, peaceably, among the Cherokee Indian. They bought their land. It's a bunch of Allisons. It was around, you know, the turn of the 1700s, 1800s when they went in there. So much for that knucklehead. What he knew? He didn't know Jack Center throwing shade at my family. He didn't know nothing about us. And I, I lowered the boom on him, too. Look at that. It's going into the Carolinas and then the East Coast about 4 p.m. on the 11th, dying down. Going up into uh, New Jersey, offshore. Don't look like it's going to be hitting a northeaster. So, all right, that's good. A lot of snow out west. Rain. California's been getting a lot of rain. San Jose is going to get it. All right, the Big Valley. Sacramento, then snow up in the mountains. A lot of snow's accumulating up there. Nevada. Yeah, when it gets spring break up. Look at Nevada's getting a lot of snow Sunday. Nevada into Utah. Wasatch Mountains. Salt Lake City. Ogden. More storms in West Virginia Monday. Uh, we got another rain system coming. More storms next Tuesday. That was a small. And up in Iowa, southern Wisconsin. But that dissipates pretty quick, it looks like. Hmm. A lot of snow up in Idaho. Denver. Well, yeah, Colorado Jan's going to get some snow Wednesday, middle of the week next week. Hmm. More storms into Illinois, but not too heavy. St. Louis area to Thursday. Those aren't too heavy, though. Hopefully, it, it'll look a lot like that. Well, that ain't too heavy. Arkansas, Michelle, it may be close to you. Look there next week, a week from now, Thursday. We're coming up out of Texas and Arkansas, Oklahoma. My peeps came from England, Scotland, and Ireland. Yeah, I had a lot of ancestors that came from that area. Turns out, I guess, that my English ancestors all came from... Uh, They came from, uh, what's what's that 
area in northern France, this North what named after the Norsemen. It's when the twenty when my cousin did the twenty three year me test, it came back all Nordic, hundred <laughs> percent Nordic. So that's interesting. All right, we can uh, go back to the present now. Kind of scroll around, look at temperatures. You know, New Days tried to do a, a camera live feed, but she had all kind of camera issues. It didn't work out too good for her. We were trying to get the eclipse live because I knew it was going to be clear up here. But she had some severe camera issues. It just didn't pan out. Just trying to run Zoom and do her camera at the same time just didn't work out too well. Let's see, where's my scroller button? So I'm going to go in and out. I want to see it. Something is amiss here in my controls. Oh, they changed the menu. That's what happened. They went and changed this thing on me. What did they do that for? I don't even know where my zoom in button's at now. Uh oh, where's it at? Is this it now? Yeah, they moved it all. They reordered everything. I got to relearn this thing. Ah, it's 23 up here. Remember when New Days was shooting the video? It was she had, her place was covered with snow. Yeah, she's uh, hopefully sleeping right now. She needs to sleep for about two or three days solid. <laughs> Boston, 39. Charleston, West Virginia, 53. D.C., 59. Roanoke, Virginia, 52. Ohio, 57, 48 up in Cleveland. Indianapolis, Indiana. I spent a day there in Federal Court. 53, we had a company that got split up. And there was a lawsuit. I thought I was going to testify, but I wound up not testifying. Thought they were going to call me the stand, but it didn't happen. Hunts Patch is 59. Birmingham. Burningham is 61. Well, let's see what Burningham, England is. Ardmore is 59. So that's probably the temperature outside, 59. Some pretty heavy storms over there, uh, just south of Memphis. That's why that's pretty heavy. Very, very, very heavy, looks like. Let's go over here to Arkansas. Fort Smith is 61. Fayette was 55. Double nickel. Conway, 61. Odin. Oh, they got Odin, Arkansas. All right. We got to go there one day. 59. <laughs> Louisiana. Shreveport, 66. We got some storms up in there. Lake Charles, I spent a night, a couple few nights there once upon a time. I spent a night in Lafayette recently getting my final fix on my transmission. 73. Wow. Tomball, 66. Cleveland, 66. How come it's not coming out? It's Houston. Let me just scroll out. Houston, 73. Flagstaff, 25, but Phoenix is 62. Interesting. Yeah, I'm always looking for my plus and minuses up here. They moved it on me. Holbrook, 41. Sholo, 37. Snowflake, 37. But Flagstaff is 25. It tends to be a little cooler than Flagstaff. Tucson is double nickels. Calvert on Arizona in the house. She's not far from there. Not too far. Lost Angels is 55 and Lost Wages is 61. San Jose. Jose is 53. All right. Now we'll go up here. Oh, well, Northwest Wokistan. Eugene, Oregon is 41. Portland's 41. Bend is 34. Idaho's in the 20s in the north and 30s in the south, 43 in Twin Falls. Missoula, Missoula is 32. It used to be a pretty city when I drove through there. 
Great Falls 37. Minot, where we got our strategic forces. This is a place that get nuked heavy in a war, unfortunately. It's 41. Yeah, there'll be a lot of nukes coming in this area. Right south of Nate. Yeah, Nate, you, you got to watch out. The Canadian Prepper, you're going to be right under all, all that nukes, nukery will be going on right south of you. Yeah, uh, Magic Prepper. It was right here in this area. I said, heck, uh, if I was a prepper, I'd, th I'd be thinking about getting out of there. <laughs> wow. That's one of the biggest targets in the world. So, uh, Alberta, since we got Arnold in the house, Ram Prairie's 30, Peace River's 32, which means that's a zero on the scale that uh, he uses, Arnold. Slave Lake is 35. What's that? About one or two degrees on the C scale. Red Deer is about minus one on the C scale, I guess. Calgary is 28. High level, 32. A little snow in there. We get some people from British Columbia occasionally. Lake Kiwana area, 34. Hello, Curtis Stone. And, of course, for our good friend Brian Perendi. Minnesota, 37, 41, uh, St. Paul. And we'll go up to Alaska. We got Meg Rising in the house. Is uh, Shaggy with us tonight? Valdez is 26. Seward is 16. Wow. Homer, 25. Anchorage, 26. Seward's kind of cool. Healy 17, Fairbanks is 19, Delta Junction is 21. How's that for spring weather? When it's springtime in Alaska, you'll be six feet below. Yeah, the ground's too hard to dig it in the wintertime. They used to wait to spring to bury people. Tanana is 12, Galena 7. Minus one over here in Pilot Station. In the Fahrenheit scale, three over here. Well, we got some cold weather up in Alaska. Minus two in Deeren, minus four in Kotzenbu. Got some interest in Kotzenbu. I may want to go there one day. I know something is in the water there. Barrows, minus six. Dead horses, minus six. How's that for springtime? And minus eight here. Minus eight. Drops just moved. He'll probably be coming back in. He moved to Arkansas. He moved from Washington State to Arkansas. Good move. So let's see what we got over here in Siberia. We got any crazy cold temperatures in Siberia? No, it looks like Alaska's colder than Siberia. Siberia usually gets colder. I don't see anything negative in Siberia. Alaska is colder than Siberia. Say it ain't so. It's springtime. Hello, Al Gore. We haven't seen Al Gore in our chat room in a while. How can Alaska have minus eight, Al Gore? Tokyo, 52. Oops, I just skipped forward in time. Let's go back. I keep skipping forward. Stop it. It's skipping on me. Oh, well, let's go down. Seoul is 57. Pauling is 61. Taipei, Taiwan is 71. I've been having a lot of earthquakes there. Still got aftershocks. Philippines in the 91. And Kusan. Wow. All right. You're getting warm. You get down in Indonesia, 82. What's Weepa? Is Weepa 82 degrees? We'll see. Weepa is 80. Okay. <laughs> now we're getting into Rodney Middleton land. Long Reach 73. They're going into autumn there. 70 over here. Uh, Brisbane is 68. Rockhampton, 66. Down here, look, the capital city. Canberra is 53. Sydney, 64. Melbourne, 59. And Hobart, Tasmania, 
It's 55, but up here you got 52. All right, let's go over here in the West Coast. Perth is 79. What's Alice Springs? Warburton. Warburton gets hot in the summer, 75 in Warburton. Alice Springs is 68. Not bad. A little storm out there. Not no, not hardly any rain in Australia right now. Just a little bit around the light, very light down here around Melbourne. Yeah, a little bit up here. Yeah, Australia's pretty dry right now, but New Zealand's got some rain. Wanaka, however you say that's double nickel. Dundee is 61. Hampton 64. Wellington 62. Auckland 68. All right, let's head up toward Europe. You get people from England in here. I said, where's the minus sign at again? It changed my controls up. Now I got some snow in the Alps. Whoops, wrong, wrong control. I've been to Turin, Italy. And I, whoop, dang, I can't get used to these controls. And I saw the shroud. You can see the Alps from Turin. You can go see, the Alps are right here. There's Turin, 59 degrees. Turin, also known as Torino. Venice, 59. Rome is 62. All right. Spent a week in Turin. That's where Alenia is located. They built the nodes for the space station. Impossible. 32 years in southern Maine. Larry Smith. How you doing, Larry? March's consumer price index drops this morning. Really? What are they using to drop the price index? What are they measuring? Everything's going up, I can see. All right. We got 50s and 40s in Denmark. Get up here in Oslo, Norway's 44. Stravanger from Center Rights 44. You got some nice temperatures in Norway. Here to the coast, you got 40s and getting some 30s, snow inland. We got a warm breeze blowing in. Look here, 41 away up here, 44 way up here. Oh, yeah, Gulf Stream and that breeze is warming stuff up that's on the coast. Wow, we got 41 way up here. Now you get in the 30s. On the coast, it's not even below freezing. Norway's a lot warmer than Alaska. One for the Gulf Stream, that wouldn't be so. If the uh, Meridian Atlantic flow cuts down, they're going to be in trouble. The Faroe Islands, 41. All right, now we're coming down into Scotland. Alaska is 44. Dundee is 43. Now we're coming into England. Sheffield, 46. Nottingham, where's the sheriff at? 50. Cambridge, the university, 50. London is 52. Oxford is 50. Canterbury, Canterbury Tales from Chaucer. Remember that, 52. Well, we usually read the Canterbury Tales in modern English. If you, you should read Chaucer the way you wrote it. I had to do it in English literature class. They used a lot of words back then that we don't use today, like clipped. You don't see that in modern English, but that was all over Chaucer's writings. Birmingham, England is 48 degrees. Birmingham, Alabama is 61. London's 52. It's cooler in England. Of course, it is autumn. Dublin, Ireland is 52. Belfast is 48. Limerick, one of my favorite Forms of poetry is 55. Cork is 55. All right. Kind of went around the world here. Did I skip anybody? If the CPI is higher than, than expected, there will be pullback stocks if lower gold will shift. Gold is already shooting up. Gold has been shooting up. All righty. Let's see. Where's the minus button? Yeah, they moved my controls around. I'm having a hard time. Getting used to the new controls on here. That's what we got. And I'm going to stop the share. 
And we're about to conclude this show here in a minute. Somebody asked me for a prayer request. I can't remember who it was right now. I have to Google Band-Aid Strong 70s commercial. What? Oh, I love those old commercials, especially if you go back to the 60s. And those old commercials were hoot, 70s commercials. Uh, what was that show where uh, they had uh, Sylvester Stallone? They supposedly brought him out of suspended animation to be a law enforcement officer. They brought him, you know, he came, you know, woke up, you know, 100 years in the future or something. I don't know how many decades it was, but. You know, instead of regular music, they were listening to old commercials on <laughs> thinking that was music. That was funny. Uh, enjoy dinner, Rodney. All right, Rodney, have a good dinner. Let's see. Arnold says, well, well, look uh, who decided to show up. It's Jason and Larry. I just mentioned their names. <laughs> well, Arnold, you're just summoning people in, aren't you? <laughs> All right. There you go, Jason. Landing on ice on Titan is even worse, Greg. Yes, I've talked about that. Tons of AMs today. Yes, sir. I've been hearing that. Scary. We are in dangerous times. you got to keep your eyes wide open and head on a swivel. I mean, there's no telling what's going to come at us. There is no telling. Like I said, uh, the, the simulations that uh, the, the Bolton of Atomic Scientists ran for war between um, Israel and Iran, said it goes nuclear fast, very fast. I hope they're wrong, but I could see that happen. That's probably why Iran's had a big push on going nuclear. They probably know that. Who? We live in interesting times. That's why you better get ready. You get better get prepared. My day job. That's my day job, and I'm. I'm proud of it, okay? <laughs> All righty. We still got 75 people in the house. That's good, especially this crazy late hour. Uh, A.B. Jason. All right, A.B. Like your uh, don't tread on me uh, symbol there. Let's see. Uh, what are we going to pray for? Does somebody ask me for a prayer request? I got brain lock tonight. Hmm. I can't remember some names right now. Let's see. Arnold asked to pray for all the missing. We can do that. Well, we can just put out for a general prayer request for all those that have asked for it. That'll cover whoever asked for it. I can't think of it who it was right now. So I'm asking me to pray for somebody. Ah, shoot. That was earlier today. I've done so much. It's skipping my mind right now. Put on the full armor of God. Let's pray for my friend Dennis. He's been recovering from a stroke. Let's pray for uh, Kaylee, the granddaughter of uh, and let's pray for uh, Grand Granny Lana's granddaughter Kaylee and her family. They're missing her now. She passed away. Uh, we can pray for Judy. She's had some issues. Pray for uh, new days, old ways. Katie is, um, she's, um, you know, not got enough sleep lately. She's still really recovering from surgery. She had major surgery. She's doing pretty well, though. Uh, found these stuck on Band-Aids, and Band-Aids are stuck on me. Ah, that's what you were looking for. <laughs> Remember the Oscar Mayer Wiener commercial? I wish I were an Oscar Mayer Wiener. Why, did, why would you want to be eight? So that's just crazy. I always thought that commercial was a little bizarre. Yes, Dennis and Kaylee. There you go, Arnold. So uh, we need to pray for world peace, most of all, that this stuff don't go crazy. If it does, it will somehow we get through it. <clears throat> I'm going to have that stuck in my head now, Laverna. <laughs> Eat more chicken. You got it right, A.B. Eat more chicken. Bannerman Gross. All right. Yeah, we could use a prayer. Forever chemicals are stuck in me. That's the truth, unfortunately. They're getting in everybody. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> You're right, Traveler. Those old commercials were funny. 
Yeah. I saw an Oscar Mayer Wiener mobile here in Huntsville a few months ago. Those things get around. <laughs> it's going to be a tough road either way. That it is. Grateful for the family we have here. Yes, we are family. That's why we pray. Pray for family, guys. So let's do it. Let's say a little quick prayer, then we'll come back and ask everybody where we're from. We're going to call it a tonight. All right, folks. I give things anything that starts on the end, I can throw a silent K on it, then I can make an unsilent pronounce it. That's why I'll call Knoxville, Knoxville, Nashville, Knoxville. That's why I want to store stuff there in my cache, not my cash. <laughs> I pronounce the E. Have fun with that stuff. The French, the French have got a funny language. You got all these consonants in a word and they don't pronounce any of it. It's like, really? It says, gz, 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 and then you just say, what? <laughs> say, what? Yeah. Makes French interesting, right? Pray for Granny's family for all of us. Pray for peace. Pray for love. Amen, Tracy. Um, this is wife watches and she'll, she'll give me a thanks. Uh, let's have a prayer for uh, Colorado Jan. I think she could use some prayers too. All right, folks. Um, a lot of people we've been praying for have recovered. Uh, they were in a bad situation and they recovered. So Randy Bly of the Blue Bottle Bunny Farm, he's done a lot better these days. It wouldn't hurt to say a prayer for him though. Prayers from Dallas, Texas for all you and the family and friends. There you go. Thank you, Traveler. All right, let's say a quick little prayer. I'm, we're not a religious channel, so pray according to whatever your faith is. I'm not going to pray out loud because that would prejudice the system. So let's just, if you don't have a faith in anything, a moment of silence is go, golden. Words are powerful. You, yours bring joy. Well, that's good to hear, X Dragon. Thank you. You made my day or my night. All right, let's say a quick prayer here for. For and, and those we love, our families and and uh, people in war zones, there's, uh, there's some tough things going on all over the world right now. A lot of people are in need and for world peace. All right, let's do a quick prayer session. Amen. Okay, service personnel, yes. All righty, folks. Tell me where you're from. Everybody, tell us where you're from. Please, high vibes, everyone. We are a force we will overcome. Yeah, the power of prayer when especially two or more pray together is very powerful. Very powerful. Almost 4 a.m. here. This is brinkmanship, a word I forgot about. Yeah, it is. And when you play in brinkmanship with nuclear weapons and nuclear powers, oh, that ain't good. That ain't good. Pray for wisdom and strength for our military. Amen to that. Kentucky, Kentucky ready. All right. 
Bella Vista, Arkansas. Yes, ma'am, Michelle Young. I appreciate your uh, super chat through the system earlier. Let me, oh, let's see what else, if anybody else used the link you showed us. Whoops, now I got to log in. Oh, my gosh. East Georgia, backyard busy. Hillsboro, West Bokistan. All right, Area 51 for Jason. All right, Michelle, that was it. Oh, no, we got another super chat from Kim Landry. Thank you, Kim. Salute to Kim this morning. Kim Landry, she used your link there uh, that you posted there, Michelle. All right, thanks for posting that link. So that helps us out here tonight. Quick question. What was that bright triangle coming out of the southwest of the sun during the eclipse? So I don't know. I didn't see that. Might have been. Don't know. I was it where we had totality and we had a lot of cloud cover. I did see, I did pull out some of those little sun type glasses. I had to take them off and look at the sun to see where to point. <laughs> Not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kim. I guess that is Kim Possible. So I'm appreciative there. 5 a.m. in Maine. Well, yeah, it is. 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. there. So we need to go. All righty. So thank you, Super Chatters. Thank you, Mods. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Remember, our world's full of hate. And that's the problem. We cannot continue as a civilization indefinitely where people are hating each other. I've talked about that. Hey, LaVera, another one. Wow. Woo-hoo. Salute to LaVera. It's only because I can right now, so please be blessed, Greg. Well, thank you, LaVera. Holy smoke. That is awesome. That's three. Big ones from LaVera tonight. Wow. That is awesome. Thank you, LaVera. Yee, comment hitting the sun. Might have been. Might have been. Comments do that. LaVera, salute. Much appreciated. I'm living off the super chats right now, guys. So uh, that is much appreciated. I watch CNN coverage of the clips live. Okay, that's that's cool. We tried to do live on Galactic Graves. We just had some technical problems with the camera we had in Maine. But I did uh, cover one of the rocket launches from Wallops. And we all survived Eclipse Day. Now that... Uh, uh, Ram- Ramadan is over. Watch out. Anyway, so just remember again, what I started to say is the world is full of hate. And they use that to pit us against each other. We got to find some way to break through that. We cannot survive as a civilization with all this much hatred in the world as our technology grows. And I covered that on the video I put on Gal- uh, Galactic Gregs today. I talked about that. I talked that, about that earlier. On that video, New Can Ever Pot, which I mentioned in that video, which was on my Green Rigs channel from like four years ago. Make sure we go back and watch that video, New Can Ever Pot. Wow, guys. So just remember, as what well, another super chat, Tracy Broken Wing. Wow. So late. Thank you, John Taylor. We will help you when we can, Greg. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. So, uh, You guys are super tonight. Super, super chatters. Once again, thank you, super chatters. Thank you. Oh, yeah. What I was going to say, thank you, everyone, for watching. As light dispels darkness, love dispels hate. So go out and shine your love light in the world. Wow. Love, not hate. Amen, X-Dragon. I'm down in Mexico living on refried beans. (laughs) All right. Thank you, everyone. Y'all are awesome tonight. Just absolutely awesome. Appreciate y'all. Everyone, <clears throat> appreciate all you that are watching. Share my videos. The platform don't do much. You just, there's a share button there. And just click it and you put it on your social media or wherever. Share them. Share them widely. Share them with your friends. Tell people to watch. We need more subscribers and we need more people watching these videos. So, you know, like an EMP video I just did on Galactic Graves. 
No, I didn't get what well, I ain't got two thousand views. I don't think yet. So that's kind of sad, considering somebody that don't know anything about the subject. Going, oh, I think we might have a problem with EMP, and you know, they'll then put out information on them about be totally wrong, and they'll get thirty thousand views. What is that? And their channel may even be smaller than mine. They'll get more views. It's like really okay. Good for them. I'm glad they're getting views. But how come when I'm bringing data, I get <laughs> So share my videos, guys. That helps. Go in the videos, make comments, like them, give me some thumbs up, and chat with the people in the comment sections. So that always helps, too. All right. And, uh, and always, if we can come up with a good uh, twister to throw and make people curious so they'll watch the end to the end, see what that was all about to say. Um, Hmm, what could we come up with? We gotta have something to come up with. It. It'll throw people off here, make them want to scroll into it. So I'll just say, um, what we thought to end. So Greg, that was an interesting tidbit there on that data. And that's good enough. Just say, Greg, that was an interesting tidbit on that data. Just throw it in the uh, comment section when you after the video, the comment section that comes up on the bottom. <laughs> that happened. Big burly hugs for y'all. All right, X Dragon, that's great. All righty. Again, thank you all for watching, and to everyone, have a good night, good day, wherever you are.